So I started last day by showing you the intersection method because when I see this, what I really see is where does this graph hit this graph? And I know what this looks like. This is the line y equals 12. This is a horizontal line, 12 high. If I were to graph those on my graphing calculator, graphing that as y1 and that as y2, what would I get? I would get something like this. Where's the solution where those two graphs do what? In fact, it would be right about there. Uh, there's four squares, so it's going up by 0 0.25, 1.25, 1.5, 1. I'd go about 1.8-ish, 1. 1. I'm guessing 1.8 something. But Oh, they said to one decimal place, I'll bet you 1.8. Is that okay? Then you can do B and actually get the answer with your graphing calculator. I'll bet you it's 1.8 something. Graph left side, graph right side, second function calculate, intersection, first curve, second curve, guess, find where they cross. Uh, C says, sketch this. Actually, Emily, I don't see 1 quarter to the x. I see graph y equals 4 to the negative x, because 1 quarter is 4 to the negative 1 with the x. In fact, that equation is the same as that equation, but I like this because it's this because e it's you know, this equation reflected horizontally. Instead of going through 216, it'll go through negative. Uh, change colors, Mr. Duick. It'll go through negative 216, and instead of going through 1 comma 4, it'll go through negative 1 comma 4, and it'll still go through 0 comma 1. It'll look an awful lot like that. And now I can, you know what? I can tell you what the solution to this is. It's going to be, if I go straight down, it's going to be uh, negative 1.8-ish. Or uh, negative whatever this number is, because it's a reflection. Were there any others on number 4 that you were going, before I do number 8? Good. Number eight. <laughs> okay. Ryan, look up, my friend. Eric, what does every single exponential graph look like? What's the asymptote? You're curving closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. Now, the x-axis is a horizontal line zero high. The asymptote of every single exponential graph before we move it is that. How has this graph been moved? Can you guys see? How has this graph been moved? What do you think? Two what and one what? Two right. So here's this horizontal line, y equals zero. If I move it two to the right, did that change the horizontal line, y equals zero? If I move it one up, ah! It's going to get one higher, Ryan. If I move this graph one up, which is what that means, instead of y equals zero, it's going to be y equals one. Okay? Yeah? There's a vertical expansion by a factor of four, then move it to right, then move it one up. We're going to spend the day graphing these by hand, but I usually do that towards the very, very end of the unit. Right now, you know what you really need to know? Absolutely. What does every single exponential graph look like, Eric? Which means it has a domain of all reals, a range y greater than zero. It has a horizontal asymptote y equals zero, x-intercept of zero comma one, no y-intercept. Sorry, y-intercept of 0, 1, no x-intercept. And having said that, that leads me wonderfully into the next lesson. Lesson 4. Oh, Mitsu, today is like Christmas. I get to give you an entirely brand new function. Warm-up number one says this, in lesson three, in the last lesson, in question 6D, which I did not assign, 
you were asked to find the inverse of that. And this is a real problem. How do I find an inverse? There's two steps. The first is switch and then get the y by itself. The first step, switching the x and y, is very, very easy. But where is the y now sitting when I do that first step, Spencer? How do I get an exponent by itself? You have no mathematical operation that will get an exponent down to ground level where you can do math with it. In fact, to do that today, we are going to have to define an entirely brand new mathematical operation. And the mathematical operation is called the logarithm, or the log for short. A logarithmic function is defined as the inverse of an exponential function. That's its definition. Remember to find an inverse, we switch x and y, we solve for y, but for the inverse of an exponential, it's tough to get the y by itself because it ends up as an exponent. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell you that if you know one equation, Haley, you know two equations. If you know x equals 2 to the y, you automatically know, and here's how you read this, that the y equals the log base 2 of x. What's my base of my exponent? 2. What's my base of my logarithm? 2. And you write the base as a little subscripted right below the g and to the right of the g just down there. If you know one, you know the other. In fact, if you have any base b, this is the definition of a logarithm, and these are its restrictions y equals the log base b of x. Eric, what does every single exponential graph look like? Could you hold that pose for a second? Now, that's the exponential. What's your range? What's the range of that, folks? What's the range, the range of that? It's not all reals. What's the range? y greater than 0, and if logs are inverses, your range should become the log's domain. All your y's have to be bigger than zero for an exponent. All your x's have to be to the right of zero for the exponential. See it? You can't take the log of a negative number. Oh, for the exponential, thank you, Eric, you can put your hands down. For the exponential, uh, the base was b for the log, the base was b. We had a couple of restrictions on the base of the exponential. We said that the base couldn't be negative. We also said the base couldn't be 1, because what's 1 cubed? 1. What's 1 to the 4th? 1. What's 1 to the 5th? Is that going to give me this shape? So we're going to say, you know what, 1 is the weird base. We're going to, nah. And you notice base can't be 1 and base can't be negative. Now that's its definition. Let's talk about what it looks like, and then we'll talk about an easier way to remember how it works. It says comparing the graphs. What we're going to do is we're going to graph 2 to the x, and this I can do because I know my exponents. I'm going to start with 0, work my way to the right. If I put a 0 in for x, what's 2 to the 0? What's anything to the 0 power? 1. In fact, 2 to the x is going to go through 0, 1. If I put a 1 there, what's 2 to the 1 power? It's going to go through 1, 2. If I put a 2 in for x, I'll get y equals 2 squared. If x is 2, what's y? 4. And if I put a 3 in for x, I'll get y equals 2 cubed. If x is 3, what's y? 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If x is 4, y is 16, which is not going to fit on my graph, so... Yeah. We're look at the graph. We're putting the 3 in for the x. We're not saying 2 to this power, right? I'm glad you made that mistake. It's a sloppy one, but it happens all the time. So since you don't do it, and everybody don't do that. 
Uh, oh, 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 let's keep going. Ellen, let's put a negative one right there. What's two to the negative one? That's a one half. You guys can't read that. Let's make it bigger. So, uh, oh, you know what? This is the graph that Eric has made famous. Okay. There it is in all its glory. There's an exponential graph. Range greater than zero, horizontal asymptote, y equals zero, domain, all reals. How do I find an inverse? So, I'll change colors. The inverse is going to go through instead of zero, one, one, zero. And instead of one over two up, two over one up. And instead of two over four up, four over two up. And this point here, which is three comma eight, is going to become eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, comma three. And this point right here, which was negative one comma point five, is going to be point five comma negative one. It's going to be down there. You with me, Brett? I'm just switching the X and Ys around on my key points. Oh, and instead of a horizontal asymptote, what's the inverse of horizontal? It'd be a vertical asymptote. In fact, the graph's going to look like this. That's the log graph. And I can do my double check that this is an inverse by going through the line y equals x. And when I do that, is it reflected about that? Yes, it is. Okay. Eric, what does every single exponential graph look like? Okay. What does every log graph look like? The inverse of that. And that's how I find it. I don't actually have it memorized. You can put your hands up at the tip of my fingers. Well, okay, that's a fib. After teaching it for 10 years, I do. But I generally tell kids, don't freak. I'll show you what I mean. It says, complete the table below. I have yelled at you and said, you need to know the domain of an exponential graph. Is this an exponential graph? Where is the x sitting in an exponent? So it is an exponential graph. What's the domain of every exponential? When Eric did, we won't make Eric do his thing, but visualize Eric doing his thing. What was the domain? All reals. How do I find an inverse? Switch the x and y around. So you know what? What's the range of the log graph? All reals. Look at the red graph that I drew. Does it go all the way down to negative infinity? Yes. Is it getting bigger and big, higher and higher? It's leveling out, but it's never quite going to level out. It's always going to keep climbing. It's eventually going to get to positive infinity. Oh, uh, what was the range of my exponential, Brett? What's my domain of my log? We're literally switching the x and y's around. y greater than 0, x greater than 0. This next one, Sandley, is a trick question. What's the x-intercept of the exponential graph? It's a trick question. Is none. What's the y-intercept of the log graph? No, the y-intercept of the log graph. It, no, y-intercept. What? What was the x-intercept of the x-intercept of the exponential? Is none. What's the y-intercept of the log? If it's truly the inverse and we switch x and y around, what's the answer? Is none. Look at my graph. Does it ever touch the y-axis in red? No. Gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. Sandali, are you ready to redeem yourself? What was the y-intercept of the exponential? What comma what? 0 comma 1. What's the x-intercept of the log? What comma what? Ah! What was the asymptote, Trevor, of the exponential graph? I caught you zoning out. I know. You ready? You with me? You back? See the blue graph? See how it's getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis? That's the asymptote. Now, what's the equation of the x-axis? It's a horizontal line. How high is the horizontal line? No, what's the x axis? How high is the x axis? Zero. Okay, so you ready with me? You ready with me? You okay? You, you throat sore or something? Are you, you awake? You good? Happy joy? 
Okay, imagine switching a three-pointer. Now you're back here. Ready, 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 ready? Okay. Trevor, see the blue graph? It has an asymptote. Can you see how it's getting closer and closer and closer to a height of zero? See it? It's getting closer and closer to the x-axis. What's the equation of the x-axis? How high is the x-axis? What did I say the height was? So the asymptote of an exponential is that. So you ready, Trevor? What's the asymptote of the log graph if it's the inverse? How do you find an inverse? How do you find an inverse? So, what's the asymptote? That wasn't so hard. Quit looking over at Brett. He's not as smart as you think. I, I assume you looking over Mitsu because you know you wouldn't be in the way, right? Okay. Do you see how we got all that? You can memorize both. I really memorize the exponential inside and out. I know everything about it. And then I say, oh, the log's the inverse. I can kind of figure out whatever I need to. I memorize some stuff about the log. But if I forget, if I panic, I got my fallback. It's the inverse of the exponential, which means switch the x and y's around, which means think about it. You know the domain and the range and the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts and the asymptotes if you know the exponentials. Turn the page. What is a logarithm, you ask? What is a logarithm, you ask? What is a logarithm, you ask? Kara, I am so glad you asked. Put your pencils down and see if you can figure it out. I'm going to tell you that the log base 5 of 25 is 2. I'm going to tell you that the log base 6 of 36 is 2. Don't worry about your log button. Joel, you back here. Put the calculator away. This is important and crucial. Cut it out. I'm going to tell you that the log base 2 of 8 is 3. I'm going to tell you that the log base, oh heck, 3 of 81 is 4. Are you spotting the pattern? Are you seeing what I'm doing? Are you also cluing in why a few days ago I said it was worth memorizing certain numbers that we all wrote on a certain blank page? So see if you can figure this out. What's the log base 7 of 49? Okay, so when I write this, what I'm really saying, Carly, is 7 to what power equals 49? What's the log base 2 of 1 over 16? First of all, forget the 1 over. What would the log base 2 of 16 be? What about 1 over? Oh yeah, there was that elevator thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's the log base 8 of 8? Now this one is so obvious that it's tough. 8 to what power equals 8? What's the log base 8 of 1? In fact, these two become general rules. We say this. The log base A of A. What's the log base any number of itself? A to what power equals A? 1. And what's the log base any number of 1? A to what power equals 1? equals, sorry, zero. Okay. Ah. Five to what power equals the square root of five? Did Mr. Duick say that it was worth remembering that square root was the same as an exponent? Why, well, yes, he did. Did Mr. Duick say that, or here's another one log base 6 of the cube root of 6 equals what? What was 1 half? I gave the answer away. Shoot. What was square root as an exponent? And the answer is, really, I don't see square root. I see this. 
And what you're really saying is 5 to what power equals 5 to the 1 half? Um, 5 to the 1 half equals 5 to the 1 half. So without me rewriting this one, what's cube root as an exponent? This is really 6 to the what equals 6 to the 1 third. One third. Turns out the answer to a log is an exponent, which is why we spent so much time on exponents starting out of this unit. Okay? If you know one, you know the other. If you know the log base 6 of 216 equals 3, you automatically know this as well. Yes? So if you know the log base A of B equals C, spot the pattern. Can you tell me what I automatically know? What to the power of what equals what? See if you can fill in the blanks by looking at the example above with numbers that you know the answer for. A to the power of C equals B. Okay? Remember earlier we asked what would the inverse be and we ended up with x equals b to the y. We ended up with that. Could you go this way and write it as a logarithm? Write that using this pattern as a log. By the way, have you noticed your base is your base, your base is uh, the base is the base is the base is the base. So that's one thing you're going to memorize in this pattern. Of where was the y exponent? Where is it now? By itself on ground level. This was the whole issue we were trying to deal with. How the heck do we get something from up there to here? Pick your pencils up. So here is our pattern over here. We're going to write our template. And from now on in this unit, if you know one, you know both. If you know, oh heck, w to the x equals y, you automatically know that the log base w of y equals x. you'll memorize this pattern as a general pattern. But it'll take, the memorization should take care of itself, but I'm telling you right now, this is gonna be the first question on your test, multiple choice. I'm not even saying I like this question, I'm saying I'm so engaged to this question that we've been in a lifelong committed relationship. Okay, it's gonna be on your test. It's gonna be multiple choice. So it's asking us to practice. Here's the log form. Here's the exponential form. Let's try uh, this one right here. The log base 2 of 1. What's that? 0, because 2 to the 0 equals 1. If you know one version, you know the other version. If you know the log, you know the exponent. If you know the exponent, you know the log. Oh, let's try this one here. The log base 2 of 1 quarter equals what? 2 to the negative 2 equals 1. 2 to the negative 2 equals... Don't get a bracket there, Mr. Duke. 1 quarter. The log answers are the exponents. Oh, and since the domain of the log function, the x's were greater than 0, as it turns out, you can't take the log of a negative. You'll get an error on your calculator once I show you how to use your calculators. What are the characteristics? So this is again one of those little pages that you might want to dog ear or footnote or bookmark. It says this. Here's my exponential. The log is the inverse. So the exponential has a y-intercept of 1. The log has an x-intercept of 1. The exponential has no x-intercept, sandily, the log has no y-intercept. 
Trevor, the exponential has the x-axis y equals zero as an asymptote. The log graph has the y-axis, which as an equation is x equals zero as a vertical asymptote. And then Vlad, here's the set notation you were asking me about. We'll make a little note. This vertical line right here means such that or belongs to, is a member of, belongs to the subset of. There's all sorts of ways to say it. But I read this statement as saying the domain is all x's such that they're positive, And it's all of the real numbers above zero. So not just one, two, three, but decimals as well. All y's such that y's are all real numbers. Now you don't need to write that. All you need to write in your answer this year is that part and that part. I'm not worried about the funky set notation. I don't mind that they did it. It is uber nerdly cool. But, oh, and if you know one, you know both. There's the restrictions on the log. X is positive, the base is positive, the base can't be one. Turn the page. <coughs> Example one says, convert each of the following from logarithmic form to exponential form. So here's the log equation. What's the exponential version of this one? What to the power of what equals what? And I'll give you a hint. Your base is your base is your base is your base is your base. Ah, nothing. What's my base? What's my base? To the power of what? You have the template on the previous page, so look at it, figure it out. 7 to the 4 equals x. And I want you to notice, Dominique, what we just did. Where was the x originally inside a log where I don't know how to solve for it? Did we just get the x by itself? In fact, if we went 7 to the 4th on our calculator, we would have just solved this equation. I'm not going to bother. It's some big number. What to the power of what equals what? I'll give you a hint. Your base is your base is your base. 10 to the third equals 1,000. Now this one, you can tell whether or not you've got it right. Because if you wrote 10 to the 1,000 power equals 3, you'd be saying, that's dumb math. I'm not going to give you one like this. You know what I'm going to give you on your test? One like C. Something purely algebraic, and I'm going to say write that as an exponent. But I'll still give you the same hint. Your base is your base is your base is your base. What to the power of what equals what? T to the m equals b. D. What to the power of what equals what? Well, my base is my base is my, okay. To the power of what? Now, I would have no problem if you wrote that equals A. I'll tell you how the answer, though, would look. Do I have a power to a power right here? What's my rule for power to a power? I almost certainly guarantee because they're typing and it's hard to do a subscript on a subscript when you're typing, they'd probably just multiply them together and write it as BD because that's what really would happen. In fact, Before I can do E, I need to get the log by itself. What's the 4 doing to the log in front mathematically, do you think, from all your years of math experience when there's no sign there? What are we doing? Time zing, how to move the 4 over. First thing I'm going to do is this. 5 over 4 equals log base B of 6. Now what to the power of what equals what? 
b to the power of 5 over 4 equals 6. By the way, this is also now an equation we could actually solve. What kind of an exponent do I have here? Fractional? Didn't we a couple of days ago learn a trick to get rid of fractional exponents? It was, uh, we did something to both sides. Both sides to the what? Better know this for the test. Didn't we go both sides to the reciprocal power? If we went both sides to the four-fifths, we could solve for b? Nod. Yes. We did. It's lesson two. Two lessons ago. We're now in lesson four. Example two. Not only can I write something as an exponent if I know the log, I can also write something as a log if I know the exponent. So if 4 to the third equals 64, I'm going to get the log base what of what equals what? Base 4, don't say log 4. If you say log 4, I'm going to assume it's on in, in, here, not a base. So log base 4 of 64 equals 3. Two to the negative three equals one over eight. What to the power of, sorry, log base what of what equals what? And if I have something complicated inside the log, put it in brackets so I know that it's all inside the log. So if it's a fraction or some kind of expression, that also means that 2 to the negative 3 equals 1 8, which is true. A and B I will not give you as a question on a test because you can figure out if your answer makes sense by looking at the numbers. I'm going to give you an algebraic one like C. Log base what of what equals what? I guarantee you the first question on your test is either going to be C or C. I'm either going to say here's an exponent rather as a log or here's a log rather as an exponent or perhaps both. I'll have one of each. They will be multiple choice questions. In fact, I'll even tell you what the answers would be. For this one here, I would also have log base E of D equals F and then I'd probably just mix the letters up in different locations. There's what the answers would be. If you're getting that question wrong, you're flunking math 12. I'd almost, put, I'd almost be willing to put down 500 bucks. The kid get this, this is the unit where either kids say, I've made the adjustment to the pace of math 12, or where they say, I'm dropping the course. So keep up with the homework. A couple of trickier ones. D. Oh, my base is my base is my base is my base. Log base x of 5 equals 2y. E. Your base is your base is your base. It's an ugly base, but log base what? 2x plus 4, and I'm going to put that in brackets because it's a pretty ugly one, of a equals negative 1. Sometimes we'll, instead of asking you to rewrite it, we'll actually ask you to evaluate something. So this says solve for y. Is the y by itself already? Yeah, good. Then uh, what is the log base 3 of 81? That's the answer, apparently. Three to what power equals 81?
log base 5 of the square root of 125. Ah! No, relax. I would rewrite this first as the log base 5. See that number 125? They didn't pick that at random. I think that 125 is actually a 5, my base. How can I write 125 as a 5? Sandling. Write that down, and then don't write this next bit down. Hold your pencils for a second. Technically, it's all inside a square root, except I don't want to write the square root, which is why I said don't write this down. Square root is also an exponent, is it not? What? Okay, so I'm going to write this as log base 5 of 5 to the 3 to the 1 half. How does that help me? See the 3? See the 1 half? Is that a power to a power? What do I do with the exponents then? Why I multiply? This is actually going to become y equals the log base 5 of 5. Remember multiplying fractions was the easiest. It was top times top, bottom times bottom, 3 times 1 over 1 times 2. And it's now so easy that it's tough. 5 to what? 5 to what power equals 5 to the power of 3 over 2? Doesn't 5 to the 3 over 2 equal 5 to the 3 over 2? See what I mean by so easy that this one, kids always, I, I, no, actually, it's too easy. I'm pretty sure it's that. 5 to the 3 halves equals 5 to the 3 halves. C. I can't do C as is. I need to get the log by itself. How would I get the log by itself? So I'm going to have y over 2 equals the log base 8 of 512. 8 to what power equals 512? I don't know. Let's see if I can reason my way there. Is the answer 8 squared? Is 8 squared 512? Kara, what is 8 squared? 8 times 8. What is 8 times 8? That's okay, ready? What is 8 squared? Louder. Yeah, louder. What is 8 squared? So I know it's not 8 squared. I wonder if 64 times 8 is 512. Well, what's 60 times 8 using a nice close round number? 480. Is that close to 512? You know what? If they made this question work out evenly, and I'm sure they did because teachers tend to do that, I'm pretty sure it's got to be to the third power. In other words, I think... In other words, I think this whole thing here has to work out to a 3. This whole thing here has to work out to a 3. Because the log base 8 of 512 is 3. What divided by 2 is 3? What's the value of the log base b of 1? Because b to the 0 equals 1. What's the value of the log base b of b? Because b to the 1 equals b to the 1. Oh, don't write this down, but... What's the value of the log base b of b to the fifth? b to what power equals b to the five power? Five. In fact, you know what? Let's generalize. 
write this one down. What's the value of log base b of b to the nth power? You know what the log base b, sorry, what, what log base 6 of 6 squared is? Just the, the 2. Nearly done. A few more. It says evaluate. What's the log base 4 of 64? 4 to what equals 64? 3. What's the log base 2 of 32? Sorry. What's the log base 2 of 1 over 32? Well, I would handle it by saying, what's the log base 2 of 32? Asar, do you know what 2 to what power equals 32? So since you've guessed, everybody, put your hands up. Fingers up. Start closed. 2, 4, 8. What comes after 8? What comes after 8? So, sorry, what comes after 16? So 32 is 2 to what power? Okay. I will feel free, Eric, to ask you any power of 2 up to here. I figure I can ask you to double all the way up to 2 to the 9th. 128, 256, 512, 1024. Really, 2048 should be fair game, too. But whatever. I, I'll be using lots of powers of 2. And I told you your test will have a non-calculator section. So I just showed you how you can do the 2s. Fingers. Okay. Uh, so if I hear you correctly, you said... 32 is 2 to the 5th. What about 1 over 32? Brett. Elevator. Right? 2 to the negative 5 equals 1 over 32. By the way, if I gave this as a multiple choice question, Asar, do you think I'd also have 1 over 5 as an answer to pick from? Mm-hmm. 1 over negative 5 as an answer to pick from? Uh-huh. Four, one quarter as an answer to pick? Uh-huh. Actually, you know what? I probably have a 16 as an answer to pick from because a lot of kids divide for, oh, 32 divided by 16. No, that's not exponents. C. Well, where do logs fall under the bed mass rules? Because they're an exponent, they fall under the E for exponent. Do the exponent first. What's up in the exponent? I don't see a log base 5 of 25, because I know what that is. You know what log base 5 of 25 is? I see this question actually as that. And suddenly now it's math 6, grade 6, I think. 5 squared, 5 times 5. D. A to the log base A of A. Do the exponent first. What is the log base A of A? This is just A to the 1, which is just plain old A. Sample 6 says, find the inverse of the following equations and answer in the form y equals blank. Get the y by itself. Okay. Kara, how do I find an inverse? So let's do that for this first one. x equals the log base 3 of y. Now they want me to get the y by itself. I can't if the y is inside a log. But if I know one equation, I know the other equation. If I know a log, I know the exponent. If I know the exponent, I know the log. So in a desperate attempt to succeed, I'm going to rewrite this as an exponent. What to the power of what equals what? Is the y by itself? So have I followed the instructions? I found the inverse and got the y by itself. There you go. Is the y on ground level? Yep. By the way, normally they'd write y equals 3 to the x instead of 3 to the x equals y, but whatever. Isabel, how do I find an inverse again? 
So for B, I would go, okay, hot shot. Uh, X equals eight to the Y. Get the Y by itself. Now, where is the Y sitting, Isabel? It's exponent. I can't do anything. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If I know one, I know the other. Let's rewrite this as a log. Log base what of what equals what? Oh, the base is the base of the base. Log base 8 of equals. Oh, Justin, is the y by itself now? Oh, that was quite convenient, actually. Warm up number three, blah, blah, blah. Let's just jump to the examples. Here's what they want you to realize in example A. Before you can rewrite the exponent as a log, you have to get the exponent by itself. What's in front of the exponent in A? A two. Oh, now you got me yawning. A two. Can I go two times three is six? Everybody say no wasn't vehement enough. Can I go 2 times 3 equals 6? Everybody say no. no. Not good enough. Can I go 2 times 3 equals 6? Everybody say no. No. Okay, so can I get your hand away from your mouth? Did you say no? I couldn't see your lips moving. Can I go 2 times 3 equals 6? Say no. Thank you. Instead, I'm going to get the exponent by itself. What's happening between the 2 and the bracket? How about I move it over then? I'm going to start out quickly rewriting this equation as follows. Now, what to the power of what equals what? Sorry, log base what of what equals what? Log base 3 of y over 2 equals x. Skip b, let's do c. c. Ashley, is the exponent, is the power by itself already in c? Say yes. Done yawning? I caught you mid yawn, sorry. Yes, 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 yes. So I don't need to divide to get it by, it's already by itself. Let's rewrite this as a logarithm. Log base what? Of what? Equals what? Log base D. Ah, fraction. Relax. Yeah. Probably not, but it, it's going to get tough to tell whether the y is also part of the log or not. I just, as soon as there's more than one thing in the log, I usually put it in brackets if they have it. Safety line. D. Y equals 3 over 2 to the 10x. Okay, let's get the 10 to the x by itself. Fair enough? What's the 3 doing to the 10? Timesing. How will I move it over? Divide. What's the 2 doing to the 10? Dividing. How will I move it over? Multiply. In fact, I'm going to get this. Change colors, Mr. Doug. 2y over 3 equals 10 to the x. Which means the log base what? 10 of what? Equals x.
She's got me yawning again. Try E on your own. See, I passed that right on to you, Kara. Try E on your own. Algebraic. Get the power by itself first. Log base x, log base s of t over r equals p. Yeah, yeah? Excellent. Can also go from log to exponential. And then we're done. What to the power of what equals what? I'll give you a hint. Your base is your base is your base. 7 to the power of x equals. Now, y over 3. In the instructions, they want me to get the y by itself. So instead of writing over 3, instead of dividing by 3, what's that the same as doing on this side? I'm going to put a 3 there, and I'll put that in brackets, and there's my timesing by 3. Did I go too fast? Are you guys okay? Two steps at once, not the end of the world. Uh, B, this is going to be 10 to the x equals y uh, over 4. You know what? Instead of over 4, I'll times by 4 over here. C, 5 to the power of x equals 7, y. oh wait a minute, how would I get the y by itself on this line? I'm going to go boom, boom, multiply by 1 7. I could divide by 7, and I wouldn't take marks off if you did. I'm just worried if I go divided by 7, I'll think the exponent is on the 7 as well, and I don't want to take that chance. So I usually put it in front as a fraction, just to be paranoid. D. E to the x equals y over 5. How would I get rid of the over 5? Multiply. Homework time. One all is good. Skip two. Three all is good. Four all is good. Five all is good. And six all is good. So right now I've gone one, two, three, four, five, six, but I've skipped number two. So really, one, three, four, five, six. Eight is good. Nine is good. Yes, I'm giving you lots of practice. 10 AD CF. Eh. 8, uh, sorry, I skipped 11. 12. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, 12 is good. Fourteen is good. Sixteen is good. There it is, the mighty logarithm. <laughs>